Welcome to Platypus Scotsman, Swamp House, part one. Let's jump in this. What we're going to do first is we're going to do the siding for the house. And this is one 32nd inch balsa wood. And I'm just going to put some wood grain into it with a wire brush. I want the thickness on them to be a quarter inch. I plan on making the walls about two and a half inches tall. And this is three inches, so it'll give me some error or room to overlap them. Then I'm just gonna use a hobby knife and a straight edge and start cutting away. Now I hold it, as soon as I pass this, I hold this just so it doesn't split or spread apart. I've had it in the past where it kind of shifts a little bit and when I hold it down, it tends to cure that problem. I'm gonna do this to all the walls and then I'll get back to you. So what I've done is I've already cut some walls out uh, this is foam core or poster, poster board, if I can pronunciate. And this is four inches wide by two and a half inches tall, three inches wide, three inches wide. And then this is the bottom piece. And what I'm doing now is I just want to 45 these. There's other ways you can do it, but this is just happens to be one way I do it. And I've done it multiple different ways. The reason why I 45 is so when I put these, when I marry these two together, I have a clean corner like that. Actually, it's more than a 45. But that's okay. And then just cut the windows out. And you can put windows and doors wherever you want. This is also a new blade, just because it works better. And foam core does dull your blades up pretty quick. At least my blades. Your blades may last longer, but my blades don't. I've also put arrows to the top so I don't screw up. Because I'm going to try something different that I haven't done before with these. I'm going to put the panels on the walls when they're not assembled. I've never, I haven't done that before. And I don't know why I haven't, but I think it's going to be a lot easier. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna cover the corners too when I'm all done. So it's not gonna be that big of a deal. And I'm also gonna glue it over the window and then when it's all dry, I'll just cut the window out from the back side. And since I'm gonna do that, I wanna make sure I have glue near the edges so it just holds the balsa wood better. And because this is tacky, the fast drying stuff, I don't wanna go too far in advance, otherwise I'll, it won't be good. And before I glue it down, I also wanna make sure that I have the side that I worked with and put grain into it. If not, I can run a wire. If not, I can run a wire brush over it later, so it's not a huge deal. And plus, this is going to be an old building, so if it's not exactly lined up, I'm not. I'm fine with that too. So what I've done is I've glued some curtains on the back. It's just regular computer paper, and I just fold it one way, and then fold it back the other way. It's kind of like an accordion, or like you, you would do in a fan. A fan just to give it those wrinkles. Then I'm just gonna put some glue at the top, glue down the sides. And when I put it on, I kinda wanna, I put arrows up so I know which ones are, which, where's the top at? I can't even talk. Anyway, so I wanted to have a little bit of a gap right here, just at the bottom. And you have your curtains on the inside. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put glue on the back of these and then I'm gonna shred the bottoms of them just so I can toughen up the paper and also give it a more uh, worn look. This cabin is gonna be, well, 
It's gonna look deserted, but it's really not. I'm gonna glue the bottom to the walls now. And just, same thing as always, just do some tacky glue. Maybe. Okay, so what I did is I just glued some uh, quarter inch by quarter inch basswood on the bottom. Gave it some little stilts. Glued some foam core up here to put the roof on. This is 1 16th inch balsa wood that I'm gonna make the roof out of. Okay, so I made the mistake of not painting the inside dark when I had uh, it open. So I had the, a dark gray and I sprayed, it was a rattle can, I sprayed inside just to make everything dark inside so it doesn't reflect. And then I made a walkway, just using the same method I had before, did the wood grain with a wire brush, and then built some struts. I don't know if they're struts, but supports. This is for the roof, so I'm just gonna glue this on now. So what I wanna do now is I want the house elevated. Oh, by the way, I put this up there, just the same method as this. Just put some uh, 1 16th inch balsa wood up there and I just really went crazy right here with the wire brush and just made it, that's one nice thing about using balsa wood is you can really wear it down, which I plan on doing to the rest of the roof. I don't want stairs right here. I want it to be a long walkway just for effects that I wanna do later. But I cut this, I cut two of these, uh, angled this up here so it, it kind of relatively meets at this point right here and then it's flattened down here so I want the house elevated so I want a ramp so I made two of those and I'm just going to glue pieces of uh, wood on top of it and once that's all said and dry I'll glue it on I'll just put some holes in the roof and I'm just gonna use a wire brush just to kind of wear them down. And since this is balsa wood, not bass, it's easier to work with as far as doing this wire brush. The wire brush shreds up bass, uh, balsa wood a lot quicker than it does balsa. Sorry. Shreds up balsa a lot quicker than it does bass. And then you can just kind of do what I did right here. You can just keep going with the wire brush until you wear the edge out. When you run the X-Acto knife like I'm doing right now, just kind of making the slashes, it allows the wire brush to grab into that area more and just to shred, it, shred it more. Because you've already weakened it and you've already made some grooves. The reference art that I'm taking this from has kind of like a cloth roof and I've seen that before kind of like a canvas in the swamps and things like that so I'm gonna do that with toilet paper and uh, white glue or PVA glue and some water this is a really old technique to use toilet paper uh, white glue and water I remember seeing it in a diorama magazine probably in the 80s uh, late 80s so it's been around a long time historical modelers have used it forever I used to use it for uh, duffel bags and uh, uh, what else is there? Um, bed rolls and things like that on my Ral Partha figures. So it's been around a while. So all I'm gonna do is dampen this first. In fact, one of my favorite models as a kid, I don't even know, I can't remember the name, it was Ral Partha, but I put a bed roll on his back. I love that thing, man. I would always have that out for 
dungeon. I mean, uh, whenever I played whenever I played D and D, my uh, whenever I ran a game, you could pretty much guarantee that you were gonna run into this guy. I just loved it. So now what I want to do is I want to thoroughly soak this canvas, and I don't care if it's flat, because uh, it's this is an old rundown building. Make sure when you do it, you paint with the grain of the wood. I'm not against it. So now I'm gonna do with my dental tool is obviously I don't want this to be new. I don't want some of it hanging down. When you tear it off, just put your finger behind it or something solid like that, it just makes it easier. So now all the wood assembly is done, I'm gonna start distressing the wood and I'm just gonna make it so it's kind of like the roof where it's not perfect. It's been here a while, probably been torn up a little bit, weathered, creatures, uh, not all of it, just enough to where it, it doesn't, everything doesn't look perfect compared to what the roof looks like and other things. And plus it kind of gives it a more creepy feel in my opinion, but that's just me. This is a dental tool I got from my dentist. He did autoclave it for me before I got it. So get all the germy germs off of it. Not that it would have bugged me anyway. But. And wood does decay and rot at different rates. Turn uh, different factors as far as if it's close to the sap or, or close to the edge and has more sap in it versus the heart. At least that's what I've been told. I'm not an expert. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some twine and some chain just through here haphazardly. Twine, if you go to my obelisk video, the size of the twines in there, I can't find my paper and I don't remember what the number is off the top of my head. Now that I got a few started, I'm just gonna start wrapping it around and periodically as I'm wrapping it, I'm gonna super glue it. Just so it stays tight. And I don't want it to look, I want it to look like it's not, like someone kind of haphazardly did it. I glued it over here so I can droop it down a little bit right here. And then I'm just gonna loop it over. Hold that right there. And hold that right there. So I've added some jewelry chain, the same method. I just picked this up at a craft store. Uh, and you'll notice that the chains obviously move. And what I do to fix that is I just run super glue down it. Like so. Make sure it's straight. And then let it dry. Now if it fills up some of the holes, it's fine. Now what I want to do is I want to put a rain barrel up here and then run a hose down into the room. I'm just using a Hearst Arts mold, drill the hole in it, and then I'm using some solder. And then I'm just going to glue it up here, put some super glue down. Then let those dry to where I can move the solder without ruining anything. Usually I'm impatient and start doing like I'm doing right now. So I'll hold the barrel down. And I just want to run this in the window. What I want to do now is I have some sagebrush branches and I want to have it appear that a tree has decided to take root and grow out of this roof where it can. So I'm gonna start gluing some of those in. And luckily I can just go in the mountains right next, not too far from me and get sagebrush, but you can also order them online. So I just put some sculpt mold in a bowl and now I'm gonna mix water with it.
Oh, by the way, I did put this on a base, as you've noticed. And it's a masonite base. It's just uh, thin masonite. And I just felled the edges with the file. And I'm putting this on a base. Some billion, a lot of people don't put billions on a base. But I think in order to tell the story for this one, this one needs to be on a base. So I have a bin full of roots I've clipped over the years. I used to have more, but now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start placing them on the building itself and around, like right here. I'm not gonna place it down here yet, uh, just cause I wanna be able to do that later. Well, that's a wrap on part one of the Swamp House. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope there was something that was useful or you can use in your hobby. Someone burned my table. Oh, no, it's glue. Uh, sorry, squirrel. Uh, yeah. Anyway, if you have any questions, comments, leave them below. And first and foremost, I'd like to thank our patrons for the support they give and the communication. And if you'd like to become a patron, uh, the benefits are that there is exclusive uh, things there such as vlogging, just things I can't put into tutorials. Uh, I'm gonna start doing longer, well, let me rephrase that. I'm gonna start doing tutorials that have a lot of repetitiveness in, in them, and I can't figure out a way to do it in this format. So, and I'm turning those into vlogs and they're going on Patreon. This is part one of this tutorial and it's gonna be probably two more. And the reason why is because I put a lot of time in this uh this build i've been doing it probably since the first of october or thereabouts and uh, there's just a lot of information and i don't want to really condense it down to one video because i think some things will be lost and i want to anyway that's i'm digressing <clears throat> if you want to see pictures of this they will be up on instagram you can check out our instagram account it's platypus scotsman we also have a facebook uh group it's platypus scotsman lounge and we have a blog uh, all under the same name and uh, you can check us out there. But anyway, uh, I'd love to answer any questions if you have any and if you have any comments, I appreciate that too. And if you feel so inclined, uh, it'd be great if you shared this with people so they could also get some usefulness out of it or another one of the videos that I have that you might find useful. You have a wonderful evening. I hope all is treating you well and or a day or whenever you happen to be watching this. And hope your hobby is uh, a good time and you're having a lot of fun in it. Anyway, remember what my mother used to always say, that anyone can do art. Ciao. Whoop. I see you.